Welcome to Low Tier Fun Tier, where I take a look at the rank 1 lineup for a country in War Thunder and pick out my favorite vehicles. Let's check out the US Air Tree. I'm going to pick out my favorite fighter, bomber, striker, and premium aircraft at BR 1.7 or lower from rank 1 of the US Air Tree, and take them into the chaos of arcade battles, since that's what most players do at rank 1. First up is the F3 F2 biplane fighter. The F3 F was the last biplane fighter that served with the US Navy, and its development led directly to the F4 F Wildcat. The design lineage is obvious with some visual inspection. Introduced in 1936, the F-3F served only briefly due to the rapid advancements in aviation before and during World War II. The plane was quite advanced for a biplane, with a huge, powerful engine and retractable landing gear. The F-3F was eventually withdrawn from frontline service just as World War II broke out and it didn't see any combat during the conflict, but it provided a valuable asset for the U.S. Navy and helped in the development of advanced naval fighter tactics during the pre-war era. The variant we have in War Thunder is the F3F2, which featured a slightly upgraded engine and some minor aerodynamic refinements. It carries 12.7 and 7.62 mm machine guns with a huge supply of ammunition, and can also carry two 100-pound bombs under the wings for a little extra ground-pounding capability. It's a biplane, so the F-3F maneuvers like a UFO in arcade battles, and is a difficult, small target to hit. With aggressive maneuvering, you can rack up significant kill counts with this plane, and even take out targets of opportunity on the ground with its bombs. The machine guns don't hit hard, but really, none of the Rank 1 fighters have hard-hitting guns, so you'll need a lot of time on target to actually shoot things down. In some matches, you might find yourself getting a lot of assists, from targets that take a few hits and then fly off and get shot down by someone else. Since the F-3F is a biplane, a lot of enemies can and will outrun you, so try to get right into the thickest furball you can and just unload your ammunition at anything and everything you can point your plane at. Next up is the Douglas B-18 Bolo. The B-18 was introduced in 1936 and quickly showed itself to be obsolete almost as soon as it entered service. The legendary B-17 Flying Fortress quickly supplanted it in frontline roles, but the Bolo soldiered on in secondary capabilities until the end of World War II, and some were even supplied to America's allies. The B-18 was a pretty basic twin-engine bomber developed from the earlier Douglas DC-2 airliner. Using an airliner as the basis for a bomber hasn't actually been as common in aviation history as one might think, but doing so in this case cut the development time on the B-18 significantly, and it also helped save on costs. In War Thunder, we get the basic B-18A. It can carry a variety of bombs between 100 and 2,000 pounds, with a total combat payload of around 2,000 pounds. The B-18 can be used to attack strategic bases when you get up-tiered, or you can take out regular ground targets. You can take out one of the huge 2,000-pounders and just erase clumps of targets that are grouped up. Or you can take the higher number of smaller bombs and try to hit things that are spread out a bit further individually. Either way, the B-18 can take a surprising amount of punishment, even though its defensive armament's pretty weak. There are huge blind spots from its gun turrets, and even with an upgraded crew, your gunners won't be shooting down too many fighters. Overall, though, the B-18 Bolo gives the Rank 1 American Tree a bomber with a solid payload that can absorb a lot of hits before going down. On an interesting side note, I've actually seen the crashed wreckage of a B-18 out in real life on a hiking trail of all places. Next up is the Vought SB-2U-3 Vindicator. The Vindicator was a carrier-based dive bomber which can provide some serious multi-roll punch to your low-tiered lineup. The Vindicator was another groundbreaking aircraft and served as the first monoplane dive bomber used by the US Navy. 
The Vought company actually developed both a biplane and a monoplane dive bomber to compete for the Navy contract, with the Vindicator eventually winning out and entering service in 1937. The SB-2U served in the first half of World War II, taking part in the Battle of Midway, but was slowly phased out of frontline service afterwards. The Vindicator was also exported to France and England before the war, and it saw combat with both of those allies. The SB-2U provided the U.S. Navy with a reasonably modern, for the time, dive bomber with excellent speed, payload, and range for a single-engine carrier-based aircraft in the late 1930s. The version we're looking at here is the SB-2U-3, which had an upgraded engine and additional forward-firing guns. In War Thunder, the Vindicator is a highly capable striker at rank 1, and it can perform both dive bombing and more conventional striker mission profiles. The forward firing guns will allow you to occasionally take out air targets, but just keep in mind that this isn't a turn fighter, and you'll probably get smoked if you try and square up with, you know, a more dedicated close combat fighter. Another really unique feature of the SB-2U-3 is that it can carry floating naval mines. So, if you play naval battles, or if you're on a map with, you know, some AI destroyers spawned out in the ocean, consider this as a, as a close air support option there. You definitely might surprise some people with those mines. Last up, we're going to look at the Martin B-10 Premium Bomber. This is one of my favorite aircraft in the entire game, if you can believe it. The introduction of the B-10 was a major turning point in military aviation. This was the first all-metal, multi-engined, monoplane bomber with an internal bomb bay, retractable landing gear, and fully enclosed gun turrets and crew positions. The B-10 made every other bomber in the world obsolete when it took to the air for the first time in 1932. The features and design paradigm of the B-10 wouldn't become the worldwide standard until just before the outbreak of World War II, this was a very modern design when it was first introduced. When it came into service, the B-10 was faster than almost every fighter aircraft in the world, and had significantly expanded range, altitude, and payload capabilities compared to earlier bombers. The B-10B, which is what we have in War Thunder, was an upgraded daytime bomber version of the basic design, and featured slight aerodynamic refinements, simplified construction, and some upgraded cockpit instrumentation. In United States service, the B-10 actually performed most of its duties providing support for civilian populations, and it was used as a cargo aircraft to deliver leaflets, drop supplies, and even as a mail plane. The version of the B-10 that was supplied to China shows up in the Chinese tech tree, and it saw extensive combat operations against the Japanese in the mid to late 1930s, but the B-10 never saw combat flying for the United States. In War Thunder, the B-10 has outstanding flight performance for a Rank 1 bomber. This plane can turn and maneuver like a fighter, at least until it bleeds off its airspeed, and it can carry a 2,000 pound bomb load internally or externally. You can use the B-10 effectively against both ground targets and strategic bases, and if you decide to fly realistic battles at rank 1, the B-10 can be a very effective RP grinder, combining its speed, payload, and premium bonuses together into a very efficient package. Well, that about wraps it up for Low Tier Fun Tier with American Aviation. If you enjoyed this look at my favorite Rank 1 Low B planes in the American Aviation Tree, keep an eye out on this channel, as I'll be making a Low Tier Fun Tier video for each nation's air tree and maybe even their ground trees. As always, thanks for watching.